Hi everyone, I hope you had a great week. It's been so much fun talking about the life of Abraham, and it was so great to hear about God, how God kept his promises to him. Now, I have a question for you. How would you feel if you worked long and hard baking a batch of delicious chocolate chip cookies that you waited long and hard for that finally finish? And then your grown up says you can't have any. It wouldn't feel good. And this week's story isn't about cookies, but it totally has something about being asked to give up something you long waited for. But before we get to that, let's sing a song. That was a great song. We can trust God, and we always should. Now it's time to check out this week's story. Check it out. The Present from the Jesus Storybook Bible. God knew that his secret rescue plan could only work if Abraham trusted him completely. God had to make sure Abraham would do whatever he asked. So a few years later, God asked Abraham to give him a present. Abraham liked giving presents to God. He gave God his animals. They were called sacrifices, and they were a way to say, I love you to God. But this time, God didn't want a lamb or a goat. God wanted Abraham to give him something more, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him his son, his only son, the son he loved, Isaac. Put his boy on the altar and kill him as a sacrifice? How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham didn't understand, but he knew that God was his father who loved him. And so Abraham trusted him. Early the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the steep stony trail up the mountain. Isaac carried the wood on his back. His father carried the knife and the coals. Papa, Isaac said, we have everything except we forgot the lamb for the sacrifice. God will give us the lamb, son, Abraham said. They built an altar and laid the wood on top. Abraham asked his son to climb on top of the wood. Isaac didn't understand, but he knew his father loved him, and so he trusted him. He climbed up onto the altar, and Abraham tied his boy to the wood. Isaac didn't struggle or try to run away. He just lay there quietly and didn't make a sound. Everything was ready. Abraham took a knife. Tears were filling up in his eyes. Pain was filling up his heart. His hand was shaking. He lifted the knife high into the air. Stop, God said. Don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not die. I now know that you love me because you would have given me your only son. Abraham felt his heart leap with joy. He unbound Isaac and folded him in his arms. 
Great sob shook the old man's whole body. Scalding tears filled his eyes, and for a long time, they stayed there just like that. In each other's arms, the boy and his dad. Suddenly, Abraham saw a ram caught in some brambles. The sacrifice. God had given them what they needed just in time. The ram would die so that Isaac didn't have to, and so that Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. And as they sat there on the mountaintop, watching the embers of the fire die in the cool night air, the stars above them sparkling in the velvet sky, God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something. God wanted his people to live, not die. God wanted to rescue his people, not punish them. But they must trust him. One day, someone will be born into your family, God promised them, and he will bring happiness to the whole world world. God was getting ready to give the whole world a wonderful present. It would be God's way to tell his people, I love you. Many years later, another son would climb another hill, carrying wood on his back. Like Isaac, he would trust his father and do what his father asked. He wouldn't struggle or run away. Who was he? God's son, his only son the son he loved, the Lamb of God. Wow, we know that God promised Abraham a lot of things, and it all started with his son Isaac. So it must have been crazy for God to tell Abraham that he wanted him to give up his son. But like our story said, God wanted his people to live and not die. He was going to use Abraham's family to bless us all, with the one who saved us all, and that's Jesus. Now this weekend, we will celebrate Jesus conquering sin and death. And even though it took a long time for God to fulfill his promise to bless everyone in the world, I'm so glad that he kept his promise to do it. Now, as we wrap up our Now More Than Ever lessons, I know we've had a few small celebrations, but this week, I want you to plan out some kind of big celebration with your family. Whether it's a day trip, an ice cream party, or some other kind of special treat, just make sure you enjoy the time you have with your loved ones and for the hope and love we have for the God who has given it to us all. All right, I also want to take this time to ask you to think about the promises you can make to God. We made money jars in week one, and giving to God is an act of worship that we all can do. So while you think about that, I'm going to take this time to close us in a word of prayer. Father, we pray for a strong faith that will help us to do the right things, even when we don't want to. Lord, we want to thank you for all the good that you do and you continue to do. You are the God that always, always, always keeps his promises. And for that, we are so thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, that's right. Amen. I'll see you guys next time.